In this video, we'll be working with Google Sheets to create a stocks tracking tool for the FANG stocks. FANG is an acronym that refers to Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Alphabet, formerly Google. We'll be using Google Sheets as our no-code tool. In my opinion, Google Sheets is an underrated no-code tool. You can sign up for Google Sheets at google.com forward slash sheets forward slash about. Google Sheets is free, so you need not worry about pricing. For this project, we're going to be using the inbuilt Google Finance functions in Google Sheets to build our stocks tracking tool. For your convenience, I've timestamped this video in the description. Let's begin by logically formatting our Google Sheet. To begin, we'll need to create a Google Sheet, which I've already done. You'll want to title that sheet, Fang Stock Tracker. Similarly, you'll also want to title the sheet, title it the same, Fang Stock Tracker. In the first column, I want name. In the second column, I want price. And then in brackets, USD. In the third, I want 52 week high. Again, in brackets, I want USD. In the fourth column, I want 52 week low. Again, in brackets, USD. In the fifth column, I want PE ratio. In the sixth column, I want buy. And in the seventh column, I want sell. I'm going to delete all the other columns in this sheet because we won't be needing them. And then I'm just going to double click in between each cell to align it correctly. So there's enough space for everything that we're going to insert as we go through this tutorial. What I'm going to do from here is make the headers bold. I'm also going to center the entire sheet. I'll freeze the top row so it doesn't move as we scroll. And I'll fill the first row in a light gray color. Now that we've formatted the sheet as I wish, let's move on to obtaining the FANG stocks data from Google Finance. Google Sheets has an inbuilt formula to fetch data from Google Finance, in much the same way an API would fetch data externally. To use Google Finance within Google Sheets, we must first identify each stock's name by its ticker. We can do that in Google Finance. You can find the ticket information for any stock on Google Finance. And as we're querying Google Finance, it's the best place to look. So the formula to get the official name of Facebook stock will be the following. So you want to make note of the ticker that we have here because we're going to be querying that. So let's go back to our FANG stock tracker and enter the formula that we need to get the official name for the Facebook stock on the NASDAQ exchange. The formula is equals Google Finance and then it will open the brackets and then what we want to do is write NASDAQ colon FB which is the ticker symbol and then we do a comma space and then write name and then we close the brackets. Now if we click enter you'll see that it has returned the official name of the Facebook stock. This formula is querying Google Finance. It's saying go to the Nasdaq exchange and find stock with the ticker symbol of FB. Then please return the name of that stock in my cell, which it has done here. Let's now do this for the remaining FANG stocks. Let's copy this formula down four more times. Then what we're going to do is change the tickers. So next up we have Amazon and the ticker symbol for Amazon is AMZN. After Amazon, we have Apple. And the ticker symbol for Apple is AAPL. After Apple, we have Netflix. And their ticker symbol is NFLX. 
and Alphabet's Google's ticker symbol is G-O-O-G-L and that should return the name for Alphabet. So as we can see, we have the official name for each of the FANG stocks as they're listed on the NASDAQ exchange. Next up, we're going to deal with the prices for each stock. Let's start with Facebook. Copy the formula over to the price column. In the formula, we'll want to change name for price. That will return the price for a share in Facebook in US dollars. Let's repeat that process for the other FANG stocks. I'm going to skip ahead and populate the price column so you don't have to watch me repeatedly. I'll be changing name to price in the formula. We now have the price for all the stocks. Next up, 52 week high. Again, start with Facebook. Copy the formula over to 52 week high. In the formula, we'll want to change price to high 52. That will return the 52 week high for a Facebook share in USD. Let's repeat that process for the other FANG stocks. And I'm going to skip ahead and populate the 52 week high column so you don't have to watch me. I'll be changing price to high 52. We now have the 52 week high for all stocks. Next up, 52 week low. Again, start with Facebook, copy the formula over to 52 week low. In the formula, we will want to change high 52 to low 52. This will return the 52 week low for a Facebook share in USD. Let's repeat that process for the other FANG stocks. I'm going to skip ahead and populate the 52 week low column so you don't have to watch me. I'll be changing high 52 to low 52. We now have the 52 week low for all stocks. Next up, PE ratio. Again, start with Facebook, copy the formula over to PE ratio. In the formula, we'll want to change low 52 to PE. This will return the PE ratio for a Facebook share. Let's repeat that process for the other FANG stocks. I'm going to skip ahead and populate the PE ratio column so you don't have to watch me. I'll be changing low 52 to PE. We now have the PE ratio for all stocks. Now that we've queried Google Finance for the data, Let's move on to the buy and sell columns. If statements are popular in programming. With a simple formula in Google Sheets, we can harness their power. The if statement will help our no-code stock tool make pre-programmed decisions for us. I want the buy column to say yes if a stock's price is equal to or less than the price that I wish to buy it at no otherwise. The formula to get yes or no showing in the buy column is the following equals if then we open a pair of brackets and we want to put our formula in between these. So what we want to say is if B2 which is the price USD column is less than or equal to my target buying price of, let's say, 100 USD. Enter yes if it is, else show me no. What this formula that we've created is saying is that if the number in cell B2 is less than or equal to my target price of 100, return yes, else return no. Moving on to the cell column, the formula to get yes or no showing in the cell column is the following. 
equals if, then we open a pair of brackets, and in between here, we put our formula. So we want to say if the figure in B2 is more than or equal to 1000, print yes. If it is, print no otherwise. And we press enter. This formula is saying that if the number in cell B2 is more than or equal to my target price of 1000, return yes, else return no. And to ensure that this simple if statement works for all of our FANG stocks, we just need to drag it down and it will apply to each and every stock that we have. So as we can see here in this column, Alphabet stock is above 1000. So if we owned it, the formula would say, yes, it's a sell. But because it hasn't reached our target price of 100, it's saying, no, do not buy. And these formulas can change for each and every stock. So if you have a target price for Apple and you have a different target price that you want to buy for Amazon, you simply need to change the figures. Now this program that we've created with no code will update as and when the figures in Google Finance are updated. Hence, if any of our buy and sell conditions get met, the columns of buy and sell will reflect that. If you wanted to take this further, you could include more Google Finance queries. The queries resource is linked in the description and it looks like this. You could then add more conditional statements as we did in the buy and sell columns creating more sophisticated decisions. But this project is now complete. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this no-code project, please give this video a like. And if you want to be notified of the latest no-code projects that I publish every week, please subscribe. I'll see you in another no-code project.